The planet Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. The surface of Venus is even hotter than the surface of Mercury, and Mercury is closest to the Sun. So, why is that? Why is Venus so hot? It's hot enough on the surface of Venus to melt lead. Well, it's all about the atmosphere. Venus has an atmosphere, 90 to, so the atmosphere of Venus is like 90 plus times thicker, 90 times thicker than ours, than ours, uh, which, is a, which is a real factor just by itself. That adds um, insulation to the, you know, the atmosphere acts as insulation to the planet. The more atmosphere you got, the more that you do. On the other hand, we also have clouds. And the clouds mean that Venus reflects most of the sun rays, sun's rays. It's covered with these very white clouds made of sulfuric acid. And so most of the sun's rays that hit Venus reflect off. And as a matter of fact, there's, there's more... So, so, that's, so that's a factor too. Okay, so the, the clouds reflect most of the sun's rays. As a matter of fact, there are more, more of the sun's rays penetrate down to the Earth than they do on Venus, because at least we have gaps in our clouds. Venus is covered with clouds 24-7. There are never any gaps in the clouds, so even though we're farther away from the sun than Venus is, Venus's clouds don't have any gaps, so there's, the sun's light energy penetrates the Earth a whole lot more than it does on Venus. So, why? And we can account for this, we can explain this, we can explain the exact temperature of Venus mathematically if we use the equations for the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. I am not going to, uh, we're not going to go over the equations for the greenhouse effect. Uh, suffice it to say that one, it's done mathematically, it's very precise, it's very careful, but it also requires a substantial amount of work. On the other hand, we have enough knowledge that we can really understand this. So we need to understand what is the greenhouse effect and why does it work? The reason the greenhouse effect is on Venus is that it has an atmosphere which is 98, 99% carbon dioxide. It has carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So what is the greenhouse effect? How does it work? And why is it that makes Venus so... Because so, that's what makes Venus so crazy hot. So we need to talk about greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect. The first thing we need to know is that we, we can base this all based on our understanding of Wien's law. We're talking about thermal black body spectra sort of stuff like this. All opaque objects in the universe are giving off this thermal black body spectra. And the spectrum they give off depends on their temperature. So, what this says, if I have an object that is 5,780 kelvins in temperature, like the sun, Mm -hmm. is the sun, then yeah, the peak in its spectrum is going to be, well, it's in the visible, it's on the border between, it's kind of in the green, yellow part of the spectrum, that's why the sun looks white, gives off a full spectrum of colors, but the peak is in the visible. Most of the sun's energy is given off as visible, ordinary visible light. That's why our eyes see these colors, because they've developed in order to be able to see the sun's rays, so that's important. On the other hand, if I take an object like a planet, a planet, which is much cooler, then the peak emission, peak emission, will be in the infrared, in the IR. It says longer wavelengths than what we see with our eyes. So with our eyes, we see the visible, and that goes down to about, oh, 700 nanometers, something like that, and then at longer wavelengths we have the infrared, and that's where, that's where planets are glowing, that's where I'm glowing right now, I'm giving off a thermal black body spectrum, it's in the infrared, so if you took an infrared camera, a heat camera, you could point it at me and see the distribution of colors, you know, warmer parts of my body, cooler parts, my nose looks cold, because bluer, because, you know, long, is, my nose would be cooler, and so it would have, you know, a longer wavelength coming out of that, so on the heat cameras they paint that as blue, has nothing to do with the real colors, but, you know, and then warmer parts of my body, maybe I'm, you know, rub my hands together and that would make them warmer, that sort of thing. Um, so that's what's going on there. So if I have objects with more ordinary temperatures, like planets, they have their peak emission in the infrared. All right. That's the first thing we need to know. In order to understand the greenhouse effect, the temperature of a planet a planet settles at a temperature when the energy flowing in from the sun is equal to the energy flowing out from the planet. So a planet's temperature settles. Temperature 
settles when energy flowing out, energy out equals energy in. And the energy going in and out are at these two different wavelengths. So the planet itself is giving off its energy as infrared, and then the sun is delivering energy to the planet as visible. So uh, the, if, if you've got a planet like Mercury without an atmosphere, it's a relatively straightforward sort of thing to calculate. Okay, what temperature is Mercury going to settle? We know how intense the sun's radiation is uh, at that distance from the sun, and then Mercury has to get hot and hot and hot and hot enough until it's, radiation, it's radiating its infrared energy out into space that equally balances the sun's energy flowing in. And hey, that's the temperature of Mercury. That's, that's how we can get the temperature of the moon. It gives us a pretty good approximation of the temperature of uh, Mars, too, because Mars has, doesn't have too much of an atmosphere. But then I start to look at a planet like Venus, and Venus has a huge atmosphere. And here's the key point. Carbon dioxide is pretty much perfectly transparent to visible light, so you can fill a room with carbon dioxide and you can see right through it, no problem. So carbon dioxide is transparent, transparent to visible, so what that means is the sun's radiation goes right through it, right down to the surface, no problem, no, no harm, no foul. On the other hand, it is opaque, or slightly opaque, or more opaque, let's just say, more opaque to infrared light energy. So if you have a planet giving off infrared energy out into space, and then you've got, it's surrounded by an atmosphere, like Venus is, you know, it's this huge atmosphere which is mostly carbon dioxide, then what happens is that the, the light energy from the surface can't get too far, and then it's absorbed by the air, it's absorbed by the gas. And then what does the gas do? Well, okay, then it's going to re-radiate. Some of it will be pointed back out towards space, and then some goes right back down to the surface. Of the stuff that's pointed towards space, and that's about half of it, but then that doesn't go too far before it's absorbed again, and then it, 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 it's hard to get out. It's, it, it acts kind of like a one-way valve. It's easy for, for light energy to go straight. You know, once it gets past the clouds, that's the problem on Venus, but once you get past the clouds, then that energy goes straight through the carbon dioxide right down to the surface. But once it hits the surface, now you've got this amazingly thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide, and so now it, 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 has, it, it has trouble getting out. It's, it's constantly blocked, and so it has to work its way out. And that's why it acts to heat up a planet. That's why the planet Venus has this super crazy hot temperature. It's hot enough on the surface of Venus to melt lead. It is so amazingly hot. It's far hotter on the surface of the planet Venus than it is on the surface of the planet Mercury. Even though Mercury is closer to the sun and Venus reflects most of the sun's rays off the tops of its clouds, but that little bit of the sun's energy that gets through that clouds, it goes all the way straight down to the surface, is absorbed by the rocks there, and then they are giving off their thermal black body spectrum. They're giving off their stuff, which by Venus law is in the infrared, and whoa, wait a minute, the carbon dioxide blocks a lot of this, this infrared light. And so that tends to make, so the surface has to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter until finally it's so hot that it can punch that in, in infrared out up to, you know, through all that carbon dioxide and then send it out into space until you can find a balance. And that's the essential idea here. So we have a one-way valve sort of thing like this. Visible goes through, infrared is partially blocked. You can get some of it out. It's not like none of it gets through, but you can you go a certain distance before you're absorbed. It's partially blocked. So that's what's going on. That's why the planet Venus is so super crazy hot. The planet Mars does have a greenhouse effect. Um, you know, its atmosphere is only 2% as thick as ours, but the atmosphere it does has is mostly carbon dioxide. And so that means that there is some warming of the, the, the planet Mars due to the greenhouse effect, and it affects the Earth as well. Um, on, our, on, on the Earth, the big difference in the Earth is what's our atmosphere made of? Most of the Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. Uh, which, you know, this isn't a huge, terribly powerful greenhouse gas, and then you've got huge amounts of oxygen, also not a huge, terribly powerful greenhouse gas. On, in our, in, here on the Earth, I mean, it, carbon dioxide is this tiny fraction, of, it's, it's, a, it's a fraction of a percent of our atmosphere. Um, 
mostly because plants are very good at absorbing it. Plants are constantly absorbing in carbon dioxide and putting out oxygen. And so I guess, you know, if, if we view it as the plant team versus the animal team, well, the plants are beating us because they're, they just suck that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere very quickly. And of course, carbon dioxide is absorbed by our, our oceans as well. And then it's made into carbonate rocks at the base of the ocean. So these processes are constantly removing, volcanoes are constantly erupting carbon dioxide and then these processes are removing it from the atmosphere. And then the plants are putting out oxygen and the animals are breathing in the oxygen, putting out carbon dioxide, but there aren't nearly as many animals as there are plants. The plants are winning and so that's why there's a huge amount of carbon dioxide uh, there's a huge amount of oxygen in our atmosphere and only a tiny amount of carbon dioxide the another interesting thing we need to know about the earth okay so how does this apply to the earth um, earth so earth has only a little co2 in our atmosphere uh, thanks to the oceans and plants. Uh, another key thing is because of that, the dominant greenhouse gas here on the Earth is not carbon dioxide. It's water vapor. The main greenhouse gas is good old-fashioned H2O, water vapor. Now, on a molecule-by-molecule -molecule basis, carbon dioxide is, a much, is much better at blocking, carbon, at blocking uh, infrared light than water is, but geez, there's a whole lot more water. Good grief. Humidity, that's what we're talking about. Water vapor. And we have these oceans, which are constantly constantly evaporating into the atmosphere. So that, that means there's a lot of water vapor in our atmosphere. Far more water vapor than there is carbon dioxide. So, on balance, uh, the greenhouse effect in the Earth is dominated by water vapor. Um, although carbon dioxide is significant, and there are a couple other gases that are significant as well. So these things are, are constantly going on, constantly have an effect. There's a natural, and, and so, I mean, the greenhouse effect, greenhouse effect is a natural thing. It's a natural process. As a matter of fact, without the natural greenhouse effect, the Earth would be much, much, much colder, um, and then and that, that would be really bad. It's nice that the Earth is, you know, the temperature that it is. You remove the greenhouse effect, it would be substantially colder, and so the fact that we have this, you know, natural greenhouse going, effect going on, you don't hear about that. The natural greenhouse effect is a wonderful thing. It is substantially improved, uh, warm the Earth up, which makes it much more conducive to life, so that's a very good thing. And then, of course, you know, we, on the, you know, the environmental consequences of what's going on, well, okay, when we burn down forests, when we burn coal, when human beings do those things, we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And we've been tracing, scientists have really good records of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere going back to at least the 1950s, uh, when there's this station out at, in Hawaii where they've been recording carbon dioxide. Uh, the Greek, uh, a scientist, Keeling, started recording that back in those days, and he found slight variations throughout a year due to the seasons, and then found that this is gradually trending up. And that we, So we have really good data for his, back to the 1950s that carbon dioxide levels have increased. The amount of carbon, that the carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere have increased is about half of the amount of all the, the, the coal and gas and those sort of burning that's taken place. So that kind of makes sense. About half of the carbon dioxide that's burned is absorbed by oceans and by life and then half of it accumulates in our atmosphere and then that will tend to warm things up over time. And then there's the whole issue of well, how much has it warmed us and you know connecting that up to the observed warming. We've noticed that the temperature of our planet on average has increased over the last 100, 150 years and so there appears to be a pretty good cause-effect relationship by this. There's, there's some question about exactly how much and there's plenty of research to be done. Good heavens, we do not understand the Earth's climate with any great certainty. There are certain processes we do understand and the physics behind the greenhouse effect and Wien's law and all that we do understand. So that's something we, we definitely do know. Cool.